Hi everyone, I'm Lolly Hancock and I am the Editorial Assistant at Aesthetic Medicine and Professional Beauty. Thank you so much for joining us for today's joint webinar, which is all about how to use shockwave therapy to treat cellulite. And this webinar is supported by Zemet UK. Um, today's webinar will be presented by Nuno, who is the Head of Education for Zemet UK. Thank you so much for being here, Nuno. Hi Lolly, hi everyone. So it's a pleasure to be here today. Great, thank you. So before I hand over to Mungo to get started, if you're watching this webinar live and you have any questions for Mungo, if you're with us in the Zoom webinar platform, then just type them into the chat box or if you're watching live on Facebook, type them into the comments and they will get through to us to answer live after the presentation. So if Mungo, if you're ready to begin and want to start sharing your screen. Fantastic. Good afternoon, wherever you're watching us from the world. I'm literally about to share my screen. So today I'm going to be talking about how the shockwave therapy help to reduce cellulite. On our agenda today, we have a few points, a little bit about me, a little bit about Zemet, Talking about cellulite, what exactly is shockwave? How does it help to reduce cellulite? Zemet's combination protocols, as well as how to get in touch with us. Let's dive in. So about me, I've, um, I've had a career change back in 2013. I have worked at various luxurious spas and locations uh, across uh, the UK. I am an owner of a successful business. And since 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic, Zaymet UK has come on board and uh, I am leading and supporting the department to inspire all skin and body professionals to be a better version of themselves. I believe that uh, professional development is uh, a key essential uh, aspect of our professionalism and uh, I am here to help you deliver that. So a little bit about Zemet. So Zemet uh, was originally born in 2010 in California, USA. In the last decade, we have expanded worldwide and we have become really, really um, inspirational in uh, providing technologies for both the aesthetic world as well as for uh, uh, beauty therapists, clinics, salons worldwide. The UK division arrived in August 2020, and uh, we have at our core design and practical use of our devices. In regards to our mission statements, uh, we strive to do best in supporting professionals uh, succeed in their businesses, and um, we offer various perks uh, to achieve. So let's really dive in and let's talk about cellulite. So cellulite, um, there are various aspects uh, throughout um, the beginning of uh, the classification in the medical world. So most of the information that you will be hearing today has been extracted from uh, various medical journals. I am all about having a scientific backing as well as to provide that uh, resourceful information to the end users. So cellulite can be classified in various aspects. So cellulite usually develops in uh, different people, different areas. Uh, commonly it's associated in the lower body as well as in the upper body. And there are different aspects that, and factors that contribute to this. So clinically, it's characterized by relief alterations on the skin surface and the thinning of the epidermal and the dermal layers and nodular clusters within the fat cells. It typically is uh, depressed. There are raised lesions giving the skin of the affected areas the orange peel effect or the cottage cheese effect or even the mattress-like aspect. These are all various definitions through the industry. 
And uh, as I said earlier, it's related to various predisposition factors. So the biotype of the person, the hereditary uh, traits, uh, the ethnic background, body weight, age, hormonal changes, smoking, and uh, genetic predisposition. When uh, we talk about um, medically, uh, there are fa four main hypotheses of cellulite development, okay? So there are different anatomical conformation of the subcutaneous tissue. There are changes that happen in the biomechanical properties. So we're talking about the elasticity and the compliance of the skin, both at the epidermal layer as well as within dermal tissue. So there is excessive hydrophilia of the extracellular matrix, which increases interstitial pressure and causing oedema within the fatty tissue. So alterations in both microvascular and lymphatic circulations uh, are going to be something that I will be talking as well. So when we talk about cellulites, uh, let's go back to the medical term. So it's gynoid lipodystrophy. It's found in around 85% of post-adolescent women. In healthy men, cellulite is rare, but it can occur because of medical conditions that result in the androgen deficiency or require estrogen therapy. Given the high number of fat cells stored in female fatty tissue, uh, we need to also take into account the aging process of connective tissue, which is going to lead to that imbalance between the lipogenesis and the lipolysis, with subsequently large fat cells bulge within the skin. Cellulite can be character, categorized in three different grades. Um, we could talk about four grades if you include someone that has no cellulite, but as the main description goes, no dimpling even when pressure is applied, dimpling when pressure is applied, Dimpling is visible standing but not lying down, as well as dimpling visible even when lying down. The grades are important to be a classification, and I inspire you to actually do this also within your body sculpting and body therapies, because when you actually are going to be grading a client, you can actually tell them. So today we have gone from a level two grade to a level zero grade, after having done a minimum of six treatments to eight treatments for those actual aspects to be addressed. So cellulite is normally triggered by a weakening of the connective tissue, as well as the decrease in microcirculation. So on this little picture, we can see on the left-hand side that we have a healthy skin. So there is absolutely beautiful circulation going through all the arterioles, as well as all the blood supply coming into the dermal layer. But when we look at when cellulite is present, we can see the enlarged adipose cells, which are actually are going to be constricting that circulation and which then creates an irregularity because there is also, as the adipose cells are round, we have obviously that dimpled effect happening and there are various ways which we can use to address this. So when we talk about um, shockwave, shockwave, what is it exactly? So it's famously known by ESW, or in the full definition, extracorporeal shockwave. They are pressured waves generated acoustically. Shock waves are different from other acoustic waves because they are at a lower frequency. One of the most dramatic examples of shock waves and their effects is, for example, of an airplane breaking the sound barrier. So you, you hear an audible bang, and that leads to breakage of glass even at distance areas. 
So here's this little example of what a shock wave looks like. So you have a rippled effect that is happening. There will be another graphic later, which will be a little bit more uh, self-explanatory. So technically, when we talk about shock wave, uh, we can characterize them in positive and negative pressures. So on this little graph, on the profile of a typical shock wave, we can see that the pressure is increased within the tissue. Then there is a positive shock that is happening on this up increase of that shock wave being delivered. And then we have a negative effect that is going to come down through time. And uh, basically, one uh, megapascal is about 10 times the atmospheric pressure. So it's something that can happen gradually at different intervals. So quoting McClure and Merritt uh, back in 2003, they have defined two fundamental different types of shock waves. So we have non-focused uh, shock wave or soft shock wave, also called radial or dispersive, as well as we have focused shock wave. In this case, comparing to the soft shock wave, it is a harder shock wave and is often referred to as lithotripsin. So it is a non-invasive procedure for those who don't know what this is. It involves in the physical destruction of hardened masses within kidney stones, bozos, or gallstones. The term comes from the Greek words which mean breaking stone. So radio shock waves are generated in two main ways. So you have an air compressed system as described by the picture. So compressed air travels through the channel into the bullet, which then activates that shock wave. As well as we have an electromagnetic system uh, that is uh, derived through a magnetic pole. So uh, the Zermatt uh, device that we use, we use it as an electromagnetic system. There are three common examples of force. So here is just a simple exemplification uh, that I've taken from a medical journal to show you how we can actually see the action that happens within the skin and within the body. So if we were applying about 60 uh, millijoule and, uh, on the actual treatment, we would be uh, going about 10 millimeters or one centimeter depth within the layers of the skin. If we were to increase that to 90 millijoules, we would be increasing the depth of penetration uh, to 2.2 centimeters or 22 millimeters. And if we were to increase it to 120 millijoule, we would be going into uh, 39 millimeters or 3.9 centimeters. So we can select with the device uh, how intense do we need to be treating that client. To make it a little bit more uh, clear on regards to the frequency waves, we have uh, a higher frequency wave, which uh, as per the previous slides, we can see that it travels um, at a much lower depth. Then we have uh, a lower frequency wave, which travels even further. We can see the actual ripple effect per se. And then we also have a much lower frequency, which travels distance a little bit more easily through the tissues without disrupting the actual superficial tissues that we want to target. So, after all this, how does shockwave help to reduce cellulite? So we can see on the picture that we do have a, a certain specific grade of cellulite on the client. This is a, a slight uh, different vision from the original picture, but we wanted to show you how much of the actual skin surface has improved, even though um, we cannot see the actual other side of the client. I want it to be quite specific. This is uh, one of our case studies that we have done whilst testing out the device when it first uh, came to us. 
So sound waves penetrate several centimeters into the body. They target not only the skin, but as well as you can target different layers of fascia, as well as the muscle beneath. Shockwave stimulates lymphatic drainage. Uh, it uh, stimulates fat breakdown. It uh, formulates uh, new blood vessels, promoting better circulation, oxygenation, tissue health, stimulating as well as collagen and elastin production, as well as reducing the subcutaneous fat thickness. The results, as per the picture, uh, are as a smoother, as well as a revitalized complexion that is evolved from several layers from within the skin. So treatments often produce significant improvements in the smoothness, reduction of circumference, reduced of appearing of scarring, cellulite and wrinkles, as well as improved lymph drainage. Quoting Siemens and all in 2005, he reported that pressure or acoustic waves are effective in disrupting the sclerotic fibrous tissue septi, responsible for much of the uneven appearance of cellulite. Brown and all back in 2005 uh, said that the stimulation of blood and lymph circulation increases membrane permeability and the stimulation of the exchange in both of the lipids. Anger and all in 2007 said that shockwave stimulated the metabolism of fat cells and increased expression of vascular endothelial floor growth factors, endothelial nitric oxide syntax, as well as the proliferating cell nuclear antigen. Okay. So here's a little demonstration of uh, the treatment in action uh, for those who are quite sensitive to shock wave or to ultrasound sounds. You may want to decrease the volume on your speakers. We can see there is uh, a generation of an erythema in the localized area as well as we are creating those pulses for uh, actually delivering the treatments. Okay, so the device that we are using at Zemet is the Zemet Wave Restore 2.0. The first uh, version of the device has now been uh, discontinued for um, uh, purposes that um, we don't really want to um, disclose. Uh, simply a new model has come through with a better delivery system, with more effective results. So we are able to treat with this device, even though that we are focusing today on cellulite, the device has various features. It is suitable for treatments for body remodeling, cellulite, localized adipose on the buttocks, inner, outer thighs, saddlebags, hips, knees, abdomen, and arms. And improvements will begin to be seen within two to three weeks of treatment. When we talk about also the Wave Restore uh, as a treatment for those uh, that are um, suitable for using uh, such a shockwave device, when we focus it onto an injured area, it promotes a faster recovery from sports injuries, musculoskeletal disorders, scar tissue is diminished, as well as there is a better inflammatory response, which contributes to a better recovery and the reduction of pain. The device has five ergonomic nozzles and uh, is used to treat different areas of the body. So the touchscreen with preset protocols allows you to treat uh, anti-cellulite programs, 
post-life policies or after cavitation or even after cryo policies. It helps you to provide body contouring treatments. Uh, it helps you to do skin tightening treatments as well as to remove muscle tension. We, as Zemets, uh, we love to combine protocols. So I've, uh, after a lot of research, I have put together a new protocol for the, a combination protocol with the Wave Restore 2.0. So I have created a combination protocol with uh, our Zemets Cool Restore Elegance, which is our cryo-holistic uh, uh, therapy device. Uh, put together with the Zamet Wave Restore 2.0. So this action of the cold shock like policies, it is 100% safe, it is 100% effective, and it's a very well tolerated non-invasive procedure for body contouring. According to various published medical journals, the combination is ideal for an alternative to liposuction for those patients who require only small or moderate amounts of adipose tissue or cellulite removal, and uh, also for those clients that are not the suitable candidates for surgical approach to body contouring. Shock therapy uh, uh, allows you to create micro traumas in the affected areas of the soft tissue and the body's healing reaction is becoming triggered by this micro trauma so what happens new healthier tissue is formed as well as connective tissue as well as we provoke a calcification breakdown Because of the combination protocols, uh, to improve the lymphatic drainage on the body, we do also offer at Zemet two different devices, which is the Sisley 2.0 with 22 chambers, as well as the Demeter 2.0 with 44 chambers. So, Probably you haven't heard a little, uh, anything uh, much about pressotherapy. It's been uh, very popular in the US as well as Eastern Europe for um, quite a long time. In the US is known mainly as pumps and in, um, in other countries is known as pressotherapy. So rather than provoking a manual lymphatic drainage treatment with our hands applying pressure light pressure as well as different strokes we are going to be provoking this in a mechanical way so it is a rhythmic motion so you have a controlled with sizzly you can control the inflation time you can control the deflation time uh, according to all the different areas of the body the suits are divided into legs and feet section as well as you have a waist section as well as you have an arm section so this rhythmic motion is similar to your traditional hands-on lymphatic drainage massage uh, with the added bonus that your hands are resting. It is a perfect pairing with different sculpting techniques. So if you are already doing cavitation or shockwave or cryolipolysis or RF, uh, Madeira therapy, body wraps, pressotherapy will help you to enhance those results. It's great to drain and support the removal of toxins from tissues. It relieves oedema, as well as it improves oxygen flow through the entire body. And after each session, your clients will feel more relaxed, renewed strength, and they feel quite lung. This is the end of uh, my presentation for today. I could have dwelled a little bit deeper, but I wanted to leave a little bit more room for any questions. This is uh, a gentle way on how you can get in touch with our team. So we are available through various social media channels, through Facebook and Instagram. You have the main Zenit United Kingdom page, as well as my personal educational page. For any orders, you have our orders at zemets.co.uk. For any training inquiries or questions, support at zemets.co.uk. And if you want to check out our 
products, our website is www.zemets.co.uk. And if you want to be directed to all the items, you can just do forward slash shop. Thank you very much. And the floor now goes into everyone that has any questions. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Nuno. That was so informative and really interesting. Um, yet, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments box now and we can ask Nuno. Um, I was wondering, you said that ethnicity can affect cellulite. Can you give a bit more insight into that and how to know how to treat clients of maybe a dark skin tone or differing ethnic backgrounds? So with the higher Fitzpatrick tones, we have um, different things that can be said, actually. So I'm going to quote you one of the most realistic examples, which uh, in certain traditions in uh, different cultures within uh, the African region, there is this uh, sense that um, the more voluptuous uh, the lady is, uh, the more uh, delightful she is to be attracted to a potential partner. So this can create obviously an array of uh, a breakdown effect, which is going to cause an excessive uh, fatty tissue to be developed, uh, having a more clogged uh, lymphatic system. And uh, this is where my, um, my note came from, actually, was thinking about all the different ethnic groups and uh, obviously the breakdown is going to be done accordingly to each individual so the results can be transformational for example i've had clients uh, with cavitation that uh, had amazing results because they followed to the dotted line the aftercare recommendations where other clients they just said oh i don't really have to walk i don't really have to drink two liters of water after my treatment i don't have to watch what I eat so it all plays a big role you know so the aftercare is 100% something that we need to be looking into. Yeah I was going to ask what aftercare is like the key thing for clients to take away and make sure that they do and also is there any downtime after the treatment obviously it's non-invasive treatment. So the downtime uh, that you're going to have is literally, you're going to have an erythema in the area. As we saw on the video, the skin was actually flushed. Uh, it wasn't actually very obvious on the video, unfortunately. There was the sun just beamed through in that moment and it kind of disrupted the lovely erythema that I, we had recorded. But uh, the downtime is literally, there could be a little bit of uh, localized um, touch sensitive uh, to the skin because obviously we have excited different layers. So if we were to classify the different layers of the skin, the adipose tissue is sitting at the deepest end. So in order for us to get there, there's going to be a little bit of disruption in all the different layers. So, but the downtime is literally uh, depends from clients to clients. Obviously, if we have a client that has very poor circulation, uh, this client is going to have a more active um, um, uh, gosh, redness or anything that uh, can be to do with that. Whereas other clients, they literally get up from the treatments. They say, oh, I feel a little bit dizzy. Uh, so we always recommend them to have a seat, have a glass of water and not to drive straight away. Recommendations post-treatment, 100%. Those that drink only one glass of water a day, I don't know how you survive. Because water, we need to go back to understanding the importance of water. So in order for our cells to communicate, we need to have electricity, right? So in order for that electricity to happen, who is the best conductor in our body? Water. So water will help to create that intracellular communication as well as it's going to support the lymphatic system to expel those toxins. So important from a professional point of view is to educate your client prior 
their appointment and say, okay, from today, prior your appointment, please don't eat uh, excessive uh, carbs. Don't eat any fatty foods because we don't want to overload the major organs so that there is actually that uh, lymphatic flow to actually dispense those toxins into the lymphatic system and expel them from the area that we are treating. I'm not asking you to run a marathon on a daily basis. 30 days of physical activity, going for a gentle walk, making sure that we are moving those muscles because how does our lymphatic system work is literally through the compression of those muscles. So if the muscle is not being stimulated, the lymphatic ducts that work through our lymphatic system are not going to become promoting that lymphatic drainage or excretion of toxins. So important also to point out diet, lifestyle. I know that in UK culture is uh, very common to have, oh, I'm just going to have that one drink to chill out for the evening. I'm not judging, uh, judging anyone that drinks. Uh, simply is just to pay attention, to be mindful that that can counteract onto the effects of the treatments. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a question in the comments from Christina, who asks, do you treat from superficial to deep or deep to superficial? And do you use multiple treatment depths with one treatment or do you spread them out across the course? Fabulous question, Christina. Thank you so much for coming through and asking that question. So we will first of all categorize or we're not going to label the client actually as professionals uh we need to be uh complicit to that so we're going to classify the client what is the severity first of that actual cellulite for example so we then know how much adipose tissue are we treating here. So you could use calipers to measure the thickness of the adipose tissue, and then you would use a combination protocol. So we provide you already with the calibration parameters from the minimum to the maximum, and which type of head you would be able to utilize uh, uh, for each treatment that you are providing. So uh, we would be able to use that as per individual basis. So we can start deep with one client and then treat more superficially. Other clients, we will have to work the other way around and go from the surface into the deeper. I hope this clarifies your question, Christina. Perfect. And how many treatments do you recommend for the best results? So, sorry, how many treatments? Yeah, is it uh, so a recommendation of treatment courses is the minimum pair uh, as uh, four to six treatments for starting up that journey. So I personally say six treatments would be your go-to. You would see your client as an intense package over a period of three weeks. You can see them twice a week. There is no problem with that especially if you are going to be focusing on smaller areas so you can actually deliver those results more efficiently. Perfect, thank you. And um, you spoke about combining protocols for combination treatments. What are the benefits of combining treatments? Uh, combining treatments. Uh, so when you combine treatments, you can actually increase the actual results. So let's look on the aspect of a client that uh, wants to have uh, a fat reduction treatment. So to reduce that fat. So we could use cavitation radio frequency in order to allow that in combination with chop wave, in combination with pressotherapy. So you actually are going to be delivering a more bespoke type of protocol for addressing that client's concern. And combination protocols are great specifically for those type of clients that they want to have results yesterday. And <laughs> basically, our approach at Zemitz is uh, simply to provide you with all the tools as well as with the parameter guidelines for you to promote that to your clients. Because many times we have professionals that say, oh, I have a client who is getting ready for a wedding. She has like one month. Uh, 
what could I do to actually get these results much quicker for the clients? And then we obviously give you the recommendations as well as uh, always going back to source and saying, I take 50% of the responsibility for actually delivering the treatment to you, but the client also needs to take 50% responsibility for the actual results. Because if they're going to come to see me once or twice a week, what are they doing behind the time that they have spent with me? So uh, it's all very objective. Amazing. And we've got one more question from Emily, who asked if um, shockwave therapy is suitable for clients post-surgery. Yeah, so post-surgery, we need to think about uh, a couple of aspects. So. Post-surgery, we need to think about uh, inflammation response. We need to think about uh, post-surgery, how drastic is the surgery, you know? So for example, if it was someone that had uh, a hip replacement, for example, a client that had a hip replacement and they want to improve that appearance, I would always say, when you are in doubt, always get a referral from the GP. Why do we say this? Because uh, shockwave can actually create a resonance because it is ultrasound and it's going to create a resonance into that new um, added piece on that hip replacement. If we're talking about uh, post uh, liposuction, if the stitches have been removed, if the client no longer has uh, a touch sensitive uh, area on the skin that uh, is not swollen, that is not bruised, because this is normally after liposuction tends to be that case, uh, I would say wait until the client is able to undergo a treatment, uh, maybe give them a test session and kind of map out which areas you want to work in first and then address the actual area that the client has the most concerns with. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mingo, for your time. I think that's all the questions we had. If you want to learn more about what Mingo has uh, spoken about today, you can get in touch with Zemit at Zemit underscore United Kingdom on Facebook, uh, on Instagram, sorry, and just Zemit UK on Facebook. Thank you so much, Mingo. Thank you so much, Lolly. Thank you, everyone that has attended, and to all those that will possibly play it on Catch Up later on. Uh, it was a pleasure to come and spend some time with you today, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you.